Lawn tramps can be super intimidating, but with a couple of tips, we should be able to make them a lot easier. The first thing I do is remove all the tie downs. Next, I wanna make sure I turn the battery switch on. That way we can easily start the engine or trim it off if the skeg's a bit low. And if the tilt lock's engaged, you gotta disengage it. I like to trim the engine down a little, but not too far the skeg can touch the bottom. And now is a great time to make sure all the drain plugs are back in. This is a pontoon and there aren't any, so we don't have to worry about it. Before the boat goes in the water, it's a good idea to add some fenders and some lines. Unplugging the trailer lights can help avoid a short or a blown bulb. Now, some people like to undo the winch strap before they launch the boat, but I like to leave it attached just in case. Attached, but loose enough it won't put pressure on the rail when the stern starts to float. If I have someone to help, I typically give them a stern line to help keep the aft from drifting around as it starts to float. If your tow vehicle has four-wheel drive, now is the time to engage it. How far back down the ramp really depends on the boat and might require a little trial and error. Once far enough, put your vehicle in park and engage the parking brake. Beware though, unless you have four-wheel drive, your parking brake is only holding the rear wheels on what could be a slippery launch ramp. But in four-wheel drive, at least one of the front wheels will help the rears hold the truck in place. The downside to leaving the winch line attached, you might have to get wet to undo it. But if you stay close, you can usually step aboard right from the dock. Now, if you're not too deep, the boat should stay right there. But be careful, because it could start to float away if you're too deep. Once aboard, fire up the engine and slowly reverse off the trailer. Sometimes you can pull the boat off the trailer with the lines, but I like to have the engine running just in case the wind gets a hold of the boat. Once free of the trailer and tied up, we pull the trailer out. If trailer parking isn't close, don't forget to hook the lights up before driving back on the street. The trick to retrieving any boat is to position the trailer deep enough that you don't have to load the winch too much, but shallow enough that the bunks help align the boat along the way. I like to fully soak the bunks first to reduce friction when winching, then pull it back out so that about one quarter of the bunks are above the water. Submerge the bunks too far and the stern might float to one side, ensuring your boat will sit crooked on the trailer. Every trailer is a bit different, so this can take some trial and error to get just the right depth. The trailer can be hard to see from the helm, so it is really handy to have a spotter to hold a line and help slowly guide the boat on. With the engine trimmed up, a little throttle can help position the boat further up the bunks. Be wary that your prop wash doesn't disturb other boats. Use the winch to pull your boat up the last few inches. With a little practice, you might not need to use the winch at all. Now before we leave, we want to make sure the boat is all the way on the trailer because that can affect the load balance. We've got a little gap, but our bunks are wet, so it should just winch all the way on. All that is left is to secure the fenders and lines, tie down the boat at all corners, and hook the lights back up. Depending on how far you need to trailer, it's not a bad idea to stow the bimini so the wind doesn't damage it at higher speeds.